So it's been a couple of years, two, three, four, I don't remember the last time I was here at Rainforest Junkies at Mike Novi's place here in Cleveland, Ohio, but if you don't know Mike, he doesn't just work with a couple of species of frogs, he works with tons of species of frogs. So the last video I did a couple of years ago, I promised you guys a follow-up video next time I'm here in Cleveland, Ohio, which is right now, I'm going to meet with Mike and we are going to do a follow-up episode on some of his incredible frog morphs that we're going to check out right here at Rainforest Junkies. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. All right, Mike Novi. It has been several years since I have been over here, and yep. now that I am back in Cleveland, I am doing this follow-up episode to see what you have that is new. Last time we touched on these guys. Look at those. The giant waxy monkey frogs. I don't think we spent a lot of time on those in the last video. We are going to start this video out with these guys. These guys are awesome. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, these are the Peruvian ones here. I got one group, well, the other um, males are downstairs, but the Suriname ones, which are a little bit bigger in my opinion, but yeah, yeah. not nearly as colorful though. So the Peruvians that we have here, and we'll take one of those out in a second, these are the ones that I obviously saw in the wild in Peru. All right, so these, look at that big guy over there, that's the Surinams, these are the Peruvians. Can we take them out and do a side-by-side -side sure. comparison to see how they differ? Sure. Differences. You look at the belly, the sides, there's not nearly as much markings or color. The eyes are pretty much the same, except these have more of a little bit of a copper effect to them. Yep. You don't see those eyes that are that kind of gold copper color in the Peruvians, do you? No, no, not, not too often. So there's the Peruvian there. And you can see there's a little bit more coloration, a little bit more pattern. And they tend to be a little bit more boxy than the uh, Surinamers. Right, and look at the difference in eyes there. More silvery. Right. But yeah, under that light, you can really see those colors just pop. I love the little reticulated pattern along the side and mm -hmm. along the legs there. Especially, like I said, it's got a little bit more of that color. Yeah. You know, so a little bit more appealing. So now when it comes to care for giant waxies, you know, these are pretty easy to care for, actually. Yeah. I mean, um, I keep everything on paper tiles because, um, you know, with bioactive, a lot of people don't realize the bioactive setups, they're nice, but they make people lazy. Yeah. Basically the bottom line. Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to large tree frogs. Now, if it's dart frogs, game on. I mean, it's perfectly fine when you use bioactive. But with these guys, you still have to get in there and clean. So bioactive is not going to take care of their feces, nor their, their urine, or their shed for that matter. Right, right. And when they shed, it comes off, and they'll lay, like, there's a piece right here, you know. They'll just put it right anywhere if they don't eat it. They'll just right. throw it on the side right. or whatever. And so it's not like a snake shed that you just dries out and you oh, pick no. up, you know, that... No, this dries it's out, like it's glue. like mortar. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the uh, the bottom line with these guys. And I, you know, I still like working with them. I have a smaller group of the Surinams compared to the, the Peruvians now, but I did pick up these guys that over here on this side as a uh, captive group from uh, Chris Hasbro. He did a really good job with them. It was his first time. He just yeah. still did a kick-ass job with it, so... Um, but I am going to try and breed these guys as, again next year. You know, obviously, you're a staple at, you know, Tinley. You're right there by the door. Every, every I don't think you've moved locations in years from where you are. I've always been there. Yeah, oh, yeah. right by the door, you're there yeah. with all your frogs. So, somebody wants to buy a waxy monkey. How much are they looking to invest in the frog? And When I have them available, um, depending on how many I can pull out of the water, sometimes you have bad years, sometimes yeah, yeah. good years, depending on how many they lay. Um, typically, if I get a decent breeding, you know, with the actual giants, I'll probably sell them off like a month out of the water because I wouldn't trust them being any younger. Sure. So the month olds would be about, say, 60 bucks. The two month olds would probably be about 75. See, obviously, that's crickets. very affordable to. We try you know, to make it. Right, you know. that people that want a really cool, big, awesome frog. You know, like the Packy Medusa is the new one that I've been working with for the last four years. I consider that newer. Right, I've right. I've been working with these guys for like almost 20. But the Packy Medusa, which you don't see that many captive, you didn't see that many captive breads in for like the longest of time. Right. 
and so we kind of just got them and started working with them and right. now we're trying to get them to where they're a little bit more accessible like being in PetSmart or something like that right so as far as lighting is concerned you've got these uh, UV lights here that you are going to swap out with VivTech LED uh, UV bulbs correct correct I'm gonna actually be testing those out with uh, the waxies and the tortoises and um, the pack of Medusa Dacticolor. And I'm gonna see you know, how well it works. I mean, it's, uh, it seems like it'd be a good deal. It's gonna know? work well, and so. I'm telling you right now, VivTech is on the cusp of revolutionizing UV lighting. So there's your first uh, VivTech bulb that you're using. Mm -hmm. On these uh, waxy monkeys, man. They are going to revolutionize things. All right, so that's this room. You've got a whole basement full of awesomeness. We're gonna head down there now. <laughs> All right, so on our way down to the basement where the cool stuff is, we're gonna make a little pit stop and see something new. This is kind of ingenious. You've got this stereo here that's playing actual frog sounds mm -hmm. that you're actually using to stimulate breeding with your frogs in here. For the most part, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, why not? It's atmospheric, anyways, and and it's nice to listen to. But yeah. to actually use that as a breeding tool, that's actually kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's pretty ingenious, actually. actually. Play, play the uh, downstairs. We have the thousand watts um, surround sound. Yeah, yeah. With two subwoofers, so when actually the storms play, the ground shakes. You can actually feel it upstairs. Wow! So you're simulating a thunderstorm to stimulate frog breeding. Correct. <laughs> Just I even have lightning genius. playing too. <laughs> Love it. All right, so we got to take a look at this guy. This guy is amazing. That frog right there is a, a they call it a peacock tank. So they don't get much bigger than that. Um, they're, they're fairly new to the hobby. Um, so basically they were smuggled out of the country and into Europe and they were confiscated and the zoo actually went and started breeding them and said, you know what, we're going to end the actual whole smuggling thing. And start saying it to the general public. Well, the smuggling stopped afterward. Right. Wouldn't you love it if every zoo, zoo did that? Right, right. So I said, what the heck? I've never worked with them before, and I just started working with dark frogs again um, for the third time. Right. <laughs> and I said, I want to work with stuff that I've never worked with before. So. And so these guys are native to Brazil. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to actually, you know, be offered the pair. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll work with them. Cool. And so my point of working with them is to, if, if they're going, if they're going to wind up going extinct in the wild anyways because of deforestation, because right. of palm oil fields. Right. So why not work with them and actually, as I sell them, just tell people about the importance of preserving the rainforest. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and tell them stop eating pine bars. Tool. Right, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to keep right. on plugging that in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> These are Antilopus uh, balios. And they're roughly uh, about a year old. They're close to breeding size. Um, They've actually been a lot of fun. Uh, I've been keeping them terrestrial so I don't induce them to like prematurely breed. So, because the males will starve themselves. Yeah. They're riding the female in Amplexus. So, I don't even do that. I just keep them a little bit drier. But other than that, they're going to be getting a bigger terrarium here soon. Um, I actually bought a group of 20 of them, figuring I have the worst luck in the world getting the sex ratio I need. I wound up getting 10 pairs out of the deal after I raised them up. So I sold off the extra pairs and I'm gonna probably sell off like two or three more pairs and keep a 3.2 for myself. Wow. But they're fun. When you miss them, they wave at you. It's pretty fun. And going down into the basement, you still have that uh, welcome mat with the dart frogs. That's awesome. What do we got in here on this shelf? Look at that. And Baluk Lac popping his front legs out. He's got a couple more days and that mm -hmm. tail's gonna be gone. Yep. All right. So you walk in this room. This room has some of my favorite frogs in it. The Crucio Hylas over here. The red-eyed tree frogs in the rain chamber over here. I'm not going to show off these guys in this video because pretty soon I'm going to be down in Costa Rica and I am going to do a red-eyed tree frog in the wild video. We're going to show off a bunch of these red-eyes in that video. So I want to kind of focus here on these Crucio Hylas here. These are such amazing frogs. Last time I was here, you were just starting to work with a new bloodline. We didn't really get a good look at it, but now that new bloodline, as you can see over here, these are adults, and this is why I wanted to do the follow-up video to see these guys and how these guys are progressing. All right, we took one of the, uh, well, one of the imports that actually did make it uh, um, and actually bred it to 
six different females. So, but this is my one gem female that just keeps on producing eggs. As you can see, she's already starting to bulge. She will breed three times a year if I did it. Which, I don't like to push it, but if she's got the eggs, might as well use it. It's a lot of stress on these guys. I was just gonna say, that's a lot of stress to do three clutches a year. Mm -hmm. But she's uh, one of my originals. She's close to nine years old now. Wow. And she's still pumping them out. Still going. Yeah. So, but this one here is her offspring. And I wanted to kind of show how it's starting to white out a little, if you've noticed. Yeah. So. Love that white speckling that's coming mm -hmm. out. And it never is the same, it's always different. Which is nice, because it just, it, it's just one of those things where it's, it doesn't look the same all the time. Right. But at nighttime, they do turn green. During the daytime, they're like this robin's egg blue. So when it comes to this particular frog, there are only three species in this genus in the world. That I know of. Yes, there's Cruzia hyla craspidopus, there's Cruzia hyla carcarifer, and there's Cruzia hyla sylvae, which I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. Which was actually separated out. It's the Costa version. They used to actually call the Costa Rican version of the calcarifer. Right. Calcarifer, and now they call it sylvae. Which is actually a little bit larger than the true calcarifer that's in Ecuador. Their, their bellies, they kind of look like freshly roasted marshmallows, don't they? I mean, they have that <laughs> color that is just unique. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So before we end this video, we have got to see the lemur leaf frogs. These are one of the rarest frogs in the world. These are only found in one little spot in Costa Rica. That's where I saw them in the wild. They're found in one little spot in Colombia. And they're found in one little spot right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, if I could just prove this blue one out. Yeah, so last time I was here, we were uh, you were working with a blue phase. There he is. Look at that. And so this so far has not been proved out since the last time I was here. No, I really haven't been focusing on it as much as I should, and I'm, I'm going to probably work on that this winter. So that'll be my project. If I can actually prove it out to be a gen genetic, then hey, great, you know. Point. <laughs> well, that one's a little camera shy. Now, is that the only blue one you have? That's the only one I have. I do have, unless it's, I mean, I don't know if it's still alive or not, but I sold one of them about three or four years ago to somebody and it went for like $300. Blue lemurs, man, I may have to get some of those from you just as a display yeah, in a terrarium in my place. Out, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully you prove that out. That is incredible. They're not hard animals to take care of either. As no? long as you got the, the right, you know, set up. You know, I mean, they, they do like high humidity. Uh, they don't like hot temperatures. So like right. in the 70s is perfect during the day and then right. 72 at night. Oh, these are found on the Caribbean side on the, on the downslope of the central mountain range mm -hmm. uh, where it is cooler mm -hmm. than on the western slope. Exactly. So, yeah, these yeah. aren't found on the western slope of the central I mountain didn't range. Any when I was right, only on, the, only on the cooler Caribbean side. All right, so real quick, I just wanted to point these out because these caught my eye. This is a new species of glass frog that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is a, a Cochranella granulosa. And uh, I still don't think I know as much as I should about these. It's just pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. But I do know that the requirements are a little bit different than like the Valry, which like to be kept cooler. Right. Um, but then there's other people that are working with the same species that are from a either a highland form or something, but they like to be kept cooler. These, on the other hand, react a bit better when I kept them hotter. Interesting. So I actually temped on the one time because I forgot about this heat lamp that was up here. And uh, they were actually at 88 degrees and they were flaming blue. Wow. And they were all swelled up and nice and happy. And I'm like, uh, okay. And then the next thing you know, the light went off. They started calling like crazy. So um, that heat, heat surge did it. Yeah. So if you put them up on the glass, what does this belly look like? It's not as translucent as like some of the other glass frogs. All right, so that's what his belly looks like. And on other glass frogs, you can see, I mean, their skin is totally transparent. You can see all their guts. This guy isn't that as transparent as the others. Mm -hmm. But just for reference, you have other glass frogs that we can see their bellies to see how just translucent their skin is. So just by comparison, this glass frog is the Valerie Eye. These are also from Costa Rica, but you can really see how their belly skin is almost completely transparent. And you can see all the internal organs in there. 
this is what I love about glass frogs. So one of the things that I love about coming over here and talking to you and seeing all these frogs is that, you know, you're a pioneer with these frogs. You know, because of you and the work that you're doing with these frogs is really why we have these frogs available. Otherwise, you know, these would be doing my best. really sick imports. So the work that you're doing with these frogs is really commendable. And again, the reason why we have so many of these frogs, Mike, is because of you. This is pretty awesome. So guys, I'm going to put all of Mike's links from Rainforest Junkies in the description below. If you are in the market for a frog, Mike is the guy to go to. And if you go to the Tinley Park NARBC Expo, his table is always, as soon as you walk in, just off to the right. Go check him out at Tinley. And if you've never been to a Tinley Park NARBC Reptile Expo, put it on your bucket list. It is the greatest expo in the world. As always, guys, thanks for watching. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.